Right, we're working in intermediate algebra. Uh, this is section 6.2, solving quadratic equations using the square root method. It starts on page 224 of your book. All right, in the last section, we, um, we solve using factoring. And factoring is generally the fastest way to solve a quadratic equation. However, not every type of equation will factor. It does turn out that this equation will factor, but we're going to use the square root method like the directions indicate. Um, uh, the f that, that's based on the principle that if x squared equals some number, you can square root both sides. That square root on a number generates a positive and negative sign, and x will equal the positive negative square root of whatever that number is. So we're going to apply that principle here. If x squared equals 64, we can get rid of this square by using a square root. We have to do the same thing to both sides, but when you put this square root on a number over here that does not have the exponent, it generates a plus minus symbol, which means there are two possibilities. There's a positive number and a negative number possibility. Here, the exponent and the radical cancel each other because they're opposite operations, and you get x. Here, this, we know the square root of 64 is 8, but it could be positive 8 or negative 8. And you can use the plus minus symbol like that, or you can list them as positive 8 and negative 8. Um, if you wanted to uh, not follow the directions and use factoring on this, you would put this 64 to the other side and you would have the difference of squares, which would generate generate x plus 8, x minus 8, and when you solve for x, you would still get the positive and negative. However, uh, for the purpose of this class, we're always going to follow the directions, and this says solve using the square root method. All right, for example 2, we have x squared equals 24, and this is an example, like I said before, of an expression that would not factor. If I moved this 24 to the other side, I do not have the difference of squares and would not be able to factor this. So that's why we're learning another method here. Instead, I can use a radical here, which will then cancel with my exponent because they're opposite operations. When I put a radical on the 24, do not forget it generates the plus minus with it. So this side turns out to be x because this exponent and radical cancel each other. This side, positive negative square root of 24, since 24 is not a perfect square, um, we're not going to have a whole number there. But we can simplify it since 24 is 4 times 6. The 4 is a perfect square, which can come to the outside. If you remember uh, simplifying radicals, you will now have a 2 on the outside, the square root of 4, and your square root of 6 stays on the inside. Now the important thing to remember is this positive negative is in the front here. It's not between the 2 and the radical. Whatever comes out of this radical stays right next to it. The positive negative is in front here. For example 3, we have a pretty simple equation, x squared equals 3. We're going to get rid of that square by using a radical. When I put this radical on this 3, it generates the plus minus symbol. The square cancels with the radical. The 3 does not simplify, so this turns out to be positive negative square root of 3. Example 4 is at the top of page 225 we have x plus 1 squared equals 25. And again, to use this uh, square root method, you have to make sure this square is isolated since the only thing on this side. So when I put the radical on it, it does cancel with that exponent. But the exponent needs to be isolated, which it is on this side. Then I'm going to use the radical on the 25, and that's going to generate the plus minus over here. This exponent and radical cancel, so I have x plus 1 over here. Um, the square root of 25 is 5, so this turns out to be positive negative 5. However, we're not done because this x is not isolated. And now we have a situation where we have to subtract 1, but what are we going to actually be subtracting 1 from? Um, this is two different numbers. This is a positive 5 and also a negative 5. So to subtract 1, you need to separate this. If you have a real number here, a whole number where the radical is gone, you need to separate this. So what's going to happen here is we're going to end up with negative 5 
minus 1 and positive 5. That's not a 5. Positive 5 minus 1, and that's what this turns into. So this will be negative 6, and this will be 4. And of course, this cancels to make x equals, and you have your two solutions here, negative 6 and 4. Example 5 says, solve using the square root method, x minus 5 squared equals 4 ninths. Again, the square is isolated here, which is something you really should check for before you put this radical on it. We're going to put the radical on the fraction. Do not freak out. It is a perfect square fraction. So this radical cancels over here with the exponent. And we have the square root of 4 over 9. And this is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. So this turns out to be positive negative 2 over 3. And again, we're going to isolate this x. That means that we have to add 5 to these two fractions here. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. So we'll carry that down here. Okay, so we're going to have positive 2 thirds minus 5 and negative 2 thirds minus 5. Um, the negative one is going to be a little bit easier because these are the same sign. So when they're the same sign, we can just put them together as 5 and 2 thirds and change it to an um, improper fraction. That makes 17 over 3. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. But that only works if they're the same sign. Uh, if they're different signs, we have to actually subtract them, Okay, which means they're going to have to have a common denominator. So this 5 with a common denominator of 3 turns into 15 thirds, and it is still negative to make it into a common denominator with this. So you're adding the 2 and the negative 15, and that makes negative 13 over 3. So this turns into your two solutions here, negative 13 over 3 and negative 17 over 3. Okay, so I just realized I made a huge mistake. I hope you guys saw it while I was doing it. This was supposed to be a plus 5, and I accidentally wrote this as a minus 5 here. So we're going to change that to plus 5, and that means that this is going to be a positive 5, and this is going to be a positive 5. And these solutions are now not correct. So we're going to do this again. Uh, what's going to happen here is this is going to be a positive 15 over 3 and when I add this to the 2 thirds that makes positive 17 over 3. And over here now I have the different signs. This is going to be positive 15 over 3 and negative 2 over 3, and when I add those, I get a positive 13 over 3. So these are my two solutions. I'm sorry about that, but it's okay. We all make mistakes. Just go back and correct your signs. Okay, example 6. x minus 4 squared equals 7. Make sure that your exponent is isolated. We're going to go ahead and use the radical on this. When I use the radical on the 7, it generates the plus minus with it. So this turns into x minus 4 equals positive negative square root of 7. Uh, this square root of 7 does not simplify. It's perfectly fine to leave the positive and negative in front of that square root, but our x is not isolated. So we need to add 4, this time make sure I get the sign right, add 4 to both sides. Now what happens here? When you add 4, it doesn't add to this radical because they're not like terms. All right, it doesn't go in front of the radical because that would be multiply. So this add 4 becomes another term that's just out in front of your plus minus. And that's what it looks like when you add these two uh, terms together. Okay, example 7 is at the top of page 226. We have 4x plus 7 squared equals 3. Again, making sure my square is isolated. I'm going to go ahead and use a radical. When I put the radical on this 3, I get a plus minus. Um, that radical cancels that exponent to give me 4x plus 7 over here. The square root of 3 does not simplify, so this is what this looks like until I start to try and isolate this x. First, I need to subtract 7. These are not like terms over here, so this is going to look like the previous example where I have a negative 7 plus minus 
the square root of 3. And that's what you do with two terms that are not like terms. The negative 7 goes out front, the plus minus stays in front of the radical. Then we need to get rid of this 4, so we're going to divide 4. You can divide 4 off the entire uh, right side here, and this is fine. I'm actually okay with this answer. Um, some teachers might want you to make this into two different terms, in which case you have to remember that 4 is under the negative 7, and it's also under the square root of 3. These are equivalent answers. I am fine with this answer, but some teachers like this one. This depends on your teacher. All right, example 8 says x squared equals negative 81. Make sure your square is isolated. You can go ahead and use a radical on it. When you put this radical on the negative 81, it generates the plus minus. The radical and the exponent cancel. Uh, the square root of 81 is 9, but the square root of negative 81 is not 9 because of the negative here. I hope you remember this back to chapter 5. This will be 9i because the square root of a negative number generates the imaginary, that's the negative part there, and the square root of 81 is 9. So we have x equals positive negative 9i. Okay, example 9 says 3x squared equals 48. Now, I've been saying make sure that your exponent is isolated before you put a radical on, and this is a case where the exponent is not isolated. This exponent's only on this x, it's not on the 3. So if I put a radical here, that 3 is going to get stuck under it because there's no exponent to cancel with the radical. So if you need to use the square root method, you need to make sure your exponent is isolated before you put the square root on. So let's get rid of this 3 as the first step. And of course, since it's a multiply, we'll divide to get it off there. So we have x squared equals 16. And then we can use a radical because our exponent is now isolated. Don't forget, the radical generates a plus minus, so we end up with x equals positive negative 4. So we got three word problems coming up, which I'm going to do on the next video. So uh, go ahead and watch the second part.